Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. As preppers, we tend to accumulate a lot of different kinds of gear. Some of those things are going to be items that are important, but we're not really going to use a whole lot. They're suitable in just a few different kinds of situations, and other than us practicing with them, they're going to sit on a shelf the majority of the time. But there are some prepper and survival related items that you can use fairly regularly, some even on a daily basis. So today we're going to be talking about prepper and survival items that you'll actually use use. One preparedness related item that you'll actually use is an electric cooler. I first got exposed to those towards the middle of last year. They're very good if you're somebody who likes camping or you take a lot of road trips. They can be plugged into things like the 12 volt outlet in your car. You can also plug them into wall outlets in your home as well. From a preparedness standpoint, these are very good for power outages. Even if you have a small power station that can't run something like a full size box freezer or side by side refrigerator, they will still probably be able to power one of these 12 volt refrigerator freezers for at least a few hours. Those kind of appliances, they don't draw a whole lot of power. Usually I think it's between 40 and 60 watts. So that's well within the capabilities of even some very, very small power stations. And some 12 volt fridges like this one even have their own rechargeable battery. So that means that even if you don't have a way to generate power, as long as that battery's charged up, you'll be able to protect maybe your most expensive groceries, things like meat, dairy, for at least a little while. And having something like this is especially advantageous if you're somebody who needs refrigerated medications, things like insulin, you'll be able to keep those medications cool for a little while. And aside from preparedness, they're also good for just everyday uses as well. We used this one on a road trip last summer. I gave the smaller one to my dad. He travels a lot for his job and it's nice just for keeping small things like drinks cool as he's traveling. Another prepper and survival related item that you'll actually use is cast iron cookware. And I really like mine. I've inherited some from my grandmother and then I bought other pieces myself. Cast iron cookware can be used in so many different situations. Situations. You can use it on an electric stovetop, you can use it on an open flame, you can throw it in your oven, you can do pretty much whatever you need to with it, and if you take care of it, it'll last for generations. Like I said, I got mine from my grandmother, so I mean, this is a multi-generational prep that you can use whether you're at home or you're cooking on a campfire. Heaters and fans are some more prepper and survival related items that you'll actually use. Like right now, I'm using my buddy heater to help me stay warm in my shop here. It's winter, it's not attached to our like heating and AC system, so it can get kind of cold in here and that helps. Then other things like fans for the summer, you can use those to help you stay cool. Maybe you just need a little bit more air circulation. They're good for that. Or if you need to dry something out, like maybe you've cleaned the floor mats in your car, you shampooed them or something, you want to dry them out real quick, then those kind of fans can be good for that. The next piece of prepper and survival gear that you'll actually use is LED lighting. And what you'll use just depends on your circumstances. For EDC, I like to keep a flashlight on my body, but I also like to keep a headlamp in my bag in case I'm somewhere and I need some sort of hands-free lighting method. LED lanterns are a better choice for home use during things like power outages. And I have several that I've used over the years. Like I have this one that runs on just regular D cells, although I do put rechargeables in there. And I also have some that run on power tool batteries. And I use those a whole lot before I got like my generator and before I got some solar power options. Those batteries, they can hold a lot of energy and the lights themselves are pretty energy efficient. And ones like this one can also charge your cell phone. And while having some nicer lights is always good, it doesn't hurt to have some cheapies lying around also. Like I've lost track of how many of those little Harbor Freight blue lights that I have. Things like that, they're very good for just keeping in like your hallway closet or the drawer in your bathroom so that you have a light pretty much anywhere that you may need it when the power goes out. And one option that you don't see mentioned a whole lot are rechargeable light bulbs. These are very good for rooms that you may be in that don't have anything like a window that'll let any exterior light in. Take our bathroom for example. It doesn't have any windows. So if you're in the shower or sitting on the toilet when the power goes out, <laughs> you're just in a lot of trouble. But since we put those in, if the power goes out, those lights, they may dim a little bit, but 
they'll stay on and it gives you plenty of light to finish up doing what you need to do. Another prepper and survival related item that you'll actually use are grail water purifiers. And what I like about these is that they can be used in a wide range of situations. They can be used in a full-blown disaster if your water supply is compromised by even chemicals or viruses, but they're also suitable for daily use also. I used this one at work for a little while and it looks just like a regular sport water bottle. You can take that pretty much anywhere and it's not going to stick out. As long as people don't see you actually filtering the water, then nobody's really going to know any different unless you say anything. And I actually have two now. I had to get a smaller one so it'll fit in my EDC bag, but regardless of the size that you get, whether you get a GeoPress like this one or an UltraPress, which is their smaller one, it's going to be able to remove bacteria, protozoa, viruses, and a lot of different kinds of chemicals. So it's going to be a lot more effective than some other products on the market like Sawyer filters. They can only remove bacteria, protozoa, microplastics, and sediment. So if you're in an urban environment, they're not really going to remove everything that you need them to, but a grail will because it's actually classified as a water purifier and not just a filter. Another prepper or survival related item that you'll actually use is a generator and I have both gas and solar power options. In my experience, gas generators are very good for just short-term stuff where you want to keep big things running for as long as you have fuel. But I found that I use my solar power options a whole lot more. They're very convenient because you can use them indoors. I'll use them anytime that I don't want to mess with an extension cord. I use them to run lights when I'm filming videos. Like right now, I have a small solar power station plugged into the ring light that I have behind my camera. My wife, she does still photography and last night, she took one of our small power stations with her to a newborn shoot. So I really like that they're good for more than just emergency situations or power outages. Even if you're somebody who likes to stay at campgrounds where a gas generator could disturb a whole lot of people, having a power station could allow you to keep your basic devices charged and also maybe run some electrical cooking equipment. And then other kinds of camping supplies can be considered prepper and survival related items that you'll actually use. Things like camp stoves, you can use them for more than just power outages. You can use them, of course, for camping, but also maybe you're grilling meat on the grill and you want to cook some other stuff outside as well. Just pull out your camp stove and you can use it for that. Then other things like sleeping bags, maybe you have guests come over or there's a power outage and you want everybody to sleep in the living room, you can use them for that. And then air mattresses, maybe you take those camping, you use them for maybe emergencies, but if you have relatives that come in, then you can air that up if you don't have like an extra bedroom that they can use. Another prepper and survival related item that you'll actually use is a first aid kit, preferably one that you put together yourself. And it's also good to have one for like your home, your EDC, for your vehicle, and then also where you work so you're covered wherever you may be. It can be just simple things like this one that I have in my EDC, you'll notice that I have just some small first aid items like band-aids and triple antibiotic ointment. I also have some basic medications like pain relievers and fever reducers. I have some allergy meds. Then I also have some items for more severe situations like this tourniquet, which can be used to control heavy bleeding. Another prepper or survival item that you'll actually use is a good poncho and this is another thing that I keep in my EDC bag because you never know where you're going to be when you have to do something in the pouring rain. Maybe you get a flat tire and you have to change it in a rainstorm or you just get to the grocery store right when the torrential downpour starts. It's always nice to have something that you can throw over you to stay dry. This one that I have, it's the USGI military style poncho. And in addition to being able to use it as a poncho, you can also use it as an emergency shelter because it has these nice grommets on it that you can use as tie off points. But one thing I would do differently is I would get a different color. The one that I have, it's just the black one. And it really does look kind of like a gigantic hefty bag while I'm wearing it. And some other prepper and survival related items that you'll actually use are vehicle repair tools. And these are just basic things to help you get through situations that you are going to face sooner or later, like jumper cables. It's a whole lot easier to find somebody that's willing to help jump you off 
than it is to find somebody who's willing to help jump you off who also happens to have jumper cables. Less and less people carry those with them nowadays. And then also another good option for helping yourself is a battery jump pack. They're lithium ion battery packs that have alligator clips with them that can jump start your car. But the thing about those is that if you don't keep an eye on them, they can drain. So it's still a good idea to have some regular jumper cables with you as well. Then other things like tire inflators, those are good to keep in your car. But even if it's something as simple as a small air compressor like this one that you can use from home, that way, whenever the temperature drops and your air pressure gets a little low, you don't have to run to the gas station and pay for their air compressor every time that that happens. And then also just a basic mechanics tool set that has things like sockets and ratchets with some extensions in them for replacing things like your batteries. Also, it doesn't hurt to have some wrenches in there as well because there are some places that are kind of hard to get to with a socket just because they're a little bit too deep. You could need something a little skinnier. Also, things like a multi-bit screwdriver to help you replace lights and other things. Another kind of prepper survival gear that you'll actually use is different kinds of clothing. Right now, we're in winter, so the focus is more on cold weather things. Things like wool beanies, wool socks, wool thermals. But also, you could put other things in here as well, like boots. But it doesn't hurt to have more general purpose clothing either, like hiking shoes that you can use year round. Or maybe it's just something as simple as upgrading the insoles and in shoes that you already have. That can make a big difference in different kinds of footwear. And then for warmer weather, it wouldn't hurt to have things like moisture wicking shirts that can help you stay dry and cool. Another item that you'll actually use is Mylar bags. When I first started prepping, I didn't store a lot of the foods that I should have been, mainly because I didn't have a way to preserve them long term. For some reason, I put off getting things like Mylar bags. But when I eventually did get them, I noticed that I stored a lot more food regularly than I had before. So if you haven't picked those up yet, if you haven't started adding those to your food storage, go ahead and do that. They're going to be really good for blocking out air, light, and moisture. Kind of the main things that'll cause your food to go bad. But another thing I like to do with Mylar bags is use them to save seeds. Maybe I just had some left over that I ordered. Or you can also use them to save seeds that you harvest from your garden. And other people, they have used Mylar bags to store other things like ammunition as well. And a lot of people ask, why do you prefer Mylar bags over vacuum seal bags? One reason is that vacuum seal bags, most of them tend to be transparent, so they let light pass through them. But even more importantly, over time, that seal can start to degrade. It's kind of a weak point with those. And once that seal fails, then it'll let other things like air and moisture in as well. When you seal up a Mylar bag, they're pretty much sealed forever. Now, of course, there are some vacuum seal bags that are Mylar. They're kind of textured so that machine can suck the air out. And those might be okay. I haven't had much experience with those. If you want to see more prepper and survival related items that you'll actually use, go ahead and check this out. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.